Howdy, my name is Sanjay. I'm a UI UX designer and developer based out of Franklinton, North Carolina. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about my Git workflow whenever I'm developing WordPress sites. So this video assumes that you already have some experience with Git and GitHub. If you don't, I recommend you check out Amy Dutton's Git series. It's really good and she's a great teacher, so I'm sure you'll love it. Also, I've included a link down in the description to a post that I wrote about my Git workflow. And if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments below. All right. So in our last video, we talked about creating a Divi child theme. In this video, we're going to talk about adding to that Divi child theme and tracking the changes using a technology called Git. So to start, what we'll do is open the um, Divi child folder and initialize the Git repository. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's open the site shell here. All right. And what we'll want to do is navigate into the uh, Divi child directory. So right now, as you might remember, it takes us uh, immediately when you're using local, it takes us to the roots of the WordPress folder. Now, what we want to do is go into the WP content directory. And to do that, we do change directory into WP content. And then inside of WP content is our themes. And inside of our themes are all the different themes that are installed on the site. So as you can see here, here are all the different themes that are installed. We have Divi, Divi Child, and a few of the WordPress default uh, themes. So let's change directories and go into the Divi child directory. Okay, clear this up. All right, so now that we're in the Divi child directory, what we want to do is initialize just like you would do for um, any other project or app that you're building. You want to go ahead and initialize the Git repository. So let's do Git init. And the next thing that we want to do is create a readme. Uh, so I'm going to go over to VS Code and create that readme. Okay, here we are in VS Code, and what we want to do is create this new file. And typically, your readme is in all capital letters, readme. And you can have it as a text file. I like to do it in Markdown, and I'll show you why in a second here. I usually put the uh, client name here, so I'll just say groovy new site. And, um, and I've actually uh, already put like a sample of my my typical readme files for a WordPress child theme. So let's go over to that post and, and grab that code and then I'll explain the rest here. Okay, so here's the readme file. Let's just go ahead and grab all this code here and I'm just gonna remove this. All right, so we have a H1 tag. So basically a, a top level tag that says this is our client. I like to put my client up at the top and then I say about this repository, and I basically just say, hey, this, this contains all the child theme files for Groovy, Groovy being the, um, the client in this case. And then it says this repository utilizes semantic versioning. We talked about semantic versioning in our previous video, so definitely go ahead and watch that. Um, and then it says that the current version can be found, uh, version number technically can be found in the child theme style.css file, which is this one right here, okay? So that's all that is. Let's hit save. And what we'll do, we're going to go, um, and actually what I like to do sometimes is actually open this up in my terminal, uh, in, in the integrated terminal inside of VS Code. So let's go here and we'll just do git add readme. Okay. And what that does is it um, adds this to the uh, staging area in the git repository. And then the next thing we need to do is actually commit these changes. So git commit with a message. That's what the M flag is for. And I'll just say um, initialize git repo. Fantastic. Great. Now next up, what I like to do is create a different name for the main branch. Because uh, if you look here, so git branch, uh, typically all git um, like just kind of standard out of the box. All of them come with the main branch being called master. Um, I like to have more inclusive code environments. So typically what I'll do is I'll just do git branch and what we want to do. So M stands for modify here. 
uh, or sorry, M stands for move, where you basically are moving the branch to a different name. Um, and then the capital M forces that change. So we'll say git branch M, and it's going to take the current branch that we're on and change the name, hit main. And what you can see here is now we've changed the, the main branch. Groovy. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is jump over to GitHub, create a repository there, and then connect both our local and our remote repositories. Okay, so here we are in GitHub, and what I'll do here for repository name is that I'll just put the name of the client. Groovy is fine here. And now typically with a WordPress uh, child theme, I like to just kind of keep everything private just so that no one can see it and, and all this other stuff. Now for you guys, what I'm going to do is um, leave this public for now, but you know it's okay to, to have it private uh, just so that you and the client can see it. That's fine too. All right, so we're going to hit create repository. And now what we're going to do is grab this SSH, um, this SSH path here, uh, because this becomes, this becomes our Git remote. So I'm going to hit copy here. Okay. And then we're going to jump over back into VS code. So now we're in VS code and what we're going to do is add a remote. So Git remote add. And what a lot of documentation will tell you to do is just call this origin. Um, so you would say like add origin and then you would put the name or the, the path of the SSH file. You could call this whatever you want. Um, sometimes I've even called this GitHub just so that I know like in my mind, oh, this is the remote is GitHub. <laughs> so you could do that as well. For now, we'll just do origin. So git remote add origin and then GitHub. So now the remote is added and you can verify that by typing git remote and you'll see that origin is added. And if you want a little bit more um, details on that, you can do git remote slash v for verbose, and it will show you both the fetch and the push paths um, that are on that remote. Okay, so now what we can see if we do a git log um, is we have our first commit here, which was to initialize the repo. And what I need to do now, let me clear this out, what I need to do now is um, we're going to push upstream, that's what the EU stands for, um, all of the changes from uh, our main branch, which is or, or our main branch to origin. So um, to origin from main is kind of how I look at it. So git push upstream, you wanna push it, set the origin remote as the upstream and um, and then have main as the branch that it's pulling all the data from. So hit go here. Okay, great. So now we have um, a basically a new uh, branch created in our remote. Let's go real quick over to GitHub and you can see that. Okay, and here you can see this is our readme file and um, you'll see that nothing else is committed just yet. And so we'll need to add the style.css file and the functions.php file, which we'll do right now. So in theory, you could just take all of the changes that you make and just kind of store them in the main branch. Uh, I don't really like to do that only because it's, it's uh, hard to track. And when you start to uh, make bigger feature changes and stuff like that. It can be just, it can get a little cumbersome. So what I like to do is a little shortcut here. So let's clear this out. All right, so here's my shortcut. I like to do git checkout. Um, and then what we wanna do is create a new branch with a B flag. And then I'll just do features, okay and then um, the name of the feature. So in this case, what we wanna do is, I'll just say init divi child, okay? So now it's switched to that new branch and we can verify that with git branch. Okay, beautiful. So we have the features and it could be divi child. And you also see that there, the main branch is still there, but the one that has a little asterisk by it, that is the one that we're currently on. So in this one, what I want to do, and I'll show you a little shortcut that I like to, to use. So I do git add, and I'm going to do functions, uh, PHP. I'll also add the screenshot and style.css. 
And here's the, uh, the little trick. If you're in the command line here, you can hit um, both like two ampersands here, and that will append a new command to run right after this. So in our case, it's going to be git commit. Oop, too many M's there. Git commit with the message. I'll just say init divi child theme files. And uh, you can do that same thing again if you wanted to um, go ahead and push this branch up. But this is getting a little long, so let me just hit enter here. Okay, so what it's telling me is that it not only did it um, add this to the queue, uh, but it to the staging area, but it also committed it. So now what I can do is I can push to origin from my feature branch. And um, sometimes if, you're, if your feature branch is a little bit long, like the name, um, you can just do git branch. And we'll just go ahead and copy this guy. Okay, so we'll do git now. We'll do git push to origin from the features in it to the child branch. Wonderful. All right, let's jump over to GitHub and see what happened. All right, so in GitHub, what you'll see is that it created a new branch for us. And we can go in here and actually compare and pull this request. Okay, and you can see that, oh, it added a functions.php file, added a style.css file, and also added a screenshot. So what I like to do is actually create, I like to create a label here. Edit labels, um, let's do a new label. And actually, there's actually already one. Yeah, I like to change this one enhancement. It just is more intuitive in my mind to just change this to features. And see, new feature request. Um, and I'll actually make that singular. Hit save changes. Okay, wonderful. Let's go back to there are no pull requests here, right? But I can compare and pull requests. And you want to give this something descriptive. So um, I'm going to call this this pull request uh, add boilerplate div child theme files. OK. Great. Oh, I spelled boiler wrong. Boiler. All right, and then I'll give it a label for feature. Okay, and then I can create the pull request. So what this does, it basically allows the maintainers of this repository to kind of look at the contributions that are made by the team. And so I happen to be one of the, the main contributors here, so I can just go ahead and merge this pull request. Now, what uh, Git tells us, or GitHub tells us, that this branch has no conflicts with the base branch. Yay! And you can also see that oh, this this user added, um, sorry, this user added a init divi child theme files as the commit. So we can go in here, we can just double check that everything looks right, and we reviewed these changes. So now I can go back and I can merge this pull request, and it's going to ask me to confirm, confirm the merge. So we, all right, so now we can go back to Groovy. Hey, look at that. Readme is here along with the other files that we initially had. So let's go back over to VS Code and uh, make sure that our main branch is synced up with our remote branch. Okay, so if we're here, we go to uh, Git Branch, right? So we're on the Features branch, but watch what happens when we're on the main branch. So we go git and we'll say check out and go to main. Oh man, did you see that? Off to the left, all of our files went away. Don't worry, never fear. Git pool is here. All right, git pool. Okay. And so what we did was we made a change on a branch, we sent it up to our remote. We said, okay, this looks good. We're gonna merge this into remote. Now we're gonna pull from the remote all of those changes back onto the main branch in our 
local directory. Hey, it's all here. Now you'll notice I only said, let's clear this out. You'll notice that I only said git pull. And the reason I could do that, if you remember, let's go back in our history here. Let's see. Okay, here is the command, git push upstream. And what this allows you to do, this U flag, when you're first setting everything up, what this allows you to do is say, hey, everything in origin, that's our default branch. So anytime I say git pull, pull from there, pull it, um, and it will bring it in for us. So that's it. That's basically all you have to do. And from here, you technically could. It wouldn't be a problem just to go and remove. So git branch, delete the features branch here. Copy this. Okay, and we can delete that. Great, that's fine. And we can get branch here. Now we're back on main. And so now any of my future commits that I make, I'm gonna make a new branch, just go through that process again, make a branch, feature slash, whatever the, uh, the change is, commit my changes, send them up to the remote in GitHub, merge that with a pull request, and then pull it back down. And it's just this continual cycle just going back and forth. And there you have it. That's my Git workflow whenever I'm developing sites in WordPress. I highly recommend you get started using Git. Get started using Git because I really feel like Git allows you to collaborate with other developers and share your code with other people, it allows you to track your changes. It's a wonderful technology to use and I use it in pretty much all of my projects. So that's all for this time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.